Let's discuss the specific structures associated with the penis as well as the functions. So there's various functions associated with the male penis. Um, first and foremost is going to contain the urethra. And specifically we're talking about the penile portion or the spongy portion of the urethra. And so through the urethra you will have the excretion of urine and then you will have ejaculation and the exit of semen. So those are the main functions of the penis. Let's talk about the specific structures. So the three main components when we're talking about the ex external portion of the penis is the body of the penis. Sometimes you hear this referred to as the shaft of the penis. This is going to be composed of, in terms of the deep structures, of uh, three different areas of erectile tissue. Then you're going to have the expanded most distal portion of the penis. This is going to be the glans penis here. And you'll also have the, uh, the external portion of the urethra of the external urethral orifice. That's going to be right in this area here. So you can see this is going to be the dilated portion here and, we'll t and it also is associated with erectile tissue. Lastly, you're going to have the root of the penis. You're going to have attachment actually to bone of specific components of the penis. And you'll see also this is going to have uh, attachment to the scrotum as well. So let's talk about those erectile tissues. So you can see in this particular image a few things that I want to note before we get into the specifics. First, uh, in this particular image, the skin has been removed. So we're looking actually at the erectile tissues. And let's review what erectile tissues are again. Remember, this is going to um, be composed of various sinuses. These sinuses can fill with blood in order to get what we, what's referred to as erection or um, uh, what we call also engorgement. Now, one other thing I want to note here. We have um, uh, the penis is shown in this particular image in what we refer to as anatomical position. So we've talked about anatomical position in uh, various other portions of the overall anatomy course. Uh, when we're talking about the penis, the penis is an anatomical position when erect. So if we're looking here, we're looking at the anterior surface and the dorsal surface in a flaccid penis is actually typically going to be more appearing anterior, but we refer to that as dorsal because in anatomical position the penis is going to be erect. So what will lead to the erection is uh, blood filling in the sinuses of these erectile tissues. So you're going to have um, the paired corpus cavernosa or the corpora cavernosa. You can see this on either side here. And these are going to extend laterally into what's referred to as the crura of the penis. So it's just an extension of that erectile tissue that is going to be covered by this ischiocavernosus muscle. And then in the midline portion of the penis, you will have an unpaired erectile tissue referred to as the corpus spongiosum penis. And this will extend further if I were to remove that muscle here, you would see kind of a dilation of this corpus spongiosum, and that would be the bulb of the penis. The bulb of the penis is going to be layered with a bulbospongiosus muscle. We had something similar in uh, the female. One other thing to note here, the most distal portion of the penis with a glans penis is going to be a dilation of this corpus spongiosum erectile tissue. Now let's talk about the innervation of the penis, and it is going to be almost exclusively autonomically innervated. So you're going to have the parasympathetics and the sympathetics playing a big role. When we're talking about parasympathetics associated with the penis, these are going to be those pelvic splanchnic nerves. So a lot of times when we think about splanchnic nerves, we think sympathetics. These particular splanchnic nerves are really the only ones that we associate with parasympathetics. And when innervation occurs here from these particular nerves, you're going to have artery dilation, you're going to have a widening of those blood sinuses, which will allow for the engorgement or the movement of blood into those erectile tissues. Additionally, with the widening of these blood sinuses, um, that's going to compress the veins, so blood will not be allowed to drain from the penis or from that erectile tissue. 
And so when we think of what is going to cause erection of the penis of, or those erectile tissues, it is these parasympathetics that are going to play the big role there. Now, sympathetics are going to play more role in terms of the ejaculation and the emission. When you think of emission, think of um, some type of exit of small amounts of semen before the larger ejaculation occurs. These are going to come from sympathetics associated with L1, L2, or lumbar 1, lumbar 2 spinal nerves. And if you look at a lot of textbooks and they're talking about what is really going to mediate ejaculation, a lot of times you only see that it's going to be sympathetics that play a role. And so um, this is kind of an oversimplification. Parasympathetics are going to play a role in terms of contracting urethral muscles. You're going to have somatic innervation in terms of um, the contraction of the bulbospongiosis muscle as well. Um, but sympathetics are going to play a big role in terms of allowing for the movement of the ducts associated with the duct systems of the male reproductive system for that peristaltic contraction to allow for the semen and the sperm uh, to move through the urethra in order to be expelled through the external urethral orifice. So now that we have an understanding of how um, uh, the, the penis or the structure of the penis as well as how um, the semen actually exits the body, let's talk about the specifics or the actual components of semen.